on this week's KSP News Show. KSP News is back and even more unprofessional than ever. And paid DLC for Kerbal Space Program? What's going on there then? Find out on this week's KSP News Show. My God, it feels good to say that again. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jin Lee Kerman. Good morning, evening, afternoon, my fellow Kerbonauts. My name is Jin Lee Kerman, and welcome back after a 10 month absence to the KSP News Show. Yes, it has been a long time since I last made one of these episodes, but we are back and we are rebooting this thing with one hell of a news story to talk about. First things first though, I do want to lay out some brief parameters with regards to this new format of show and what you guys can expect in the future with regards to these sorts of things. I know with the last run of the KSP News Show, I did try my best to make a an episode every week, like one or two maybe a week, but due to circumstances of my own and the fact that Squad are a little bit more cryptic now with their dev notes and they tend to only release actual concrete details when the update is actually close to release and other than that they don't really provide much of an insight other than just saying development is progressing nicely and all that sort of stuff then I don't think I'm going to be able to do the same with this run of the KSP News Show unfortunately. I will be making videos obviously when there's been significant developments when something huge that the story I've got to talk about today day uh, drops news or such as that and if there's sort of discussion topics that I want to open up to the community to try and get some discussion going in the comments down below because we are a community for this game and so we need to make our voices heard I feel. I also want to say a massive thank you to those of you who've stuck around for this episode to actually sort of materialize I guess. I realize a lot of my viewer base have kind of dropped away as I've sort of explored new forms of content but to be fair I did kind of get burned out about a year ago from making like basically the same video just with a different commentary track over and over again and so hopefully the fact that I'm not doing this as regularly as I used to as well as actually trying to I don't know, change up a little bit with this show, this new format of KSP News Show, should mean that perhaps that that doesn't happen. And like I say, thank you so much for you guys who stuck around, and I apologise for the wait, but it's over now. But enough gushing to the camera, let's go on with the actual content of this video, because oh my god, is it a doozy. So Squad, as ever, have been beavering away with Kerbal Space Program. They've been working a lot on smaller things, uh, such as localization and UI tweaks. UI tweaks, for obvious reasons, are always welcomed and stuff like that, help the game run a bit smoother. And the localization process is basically to help with modding. So anyone who wants to create a mod for the game, now all the stuff, um, or the internals of the game, should I say, are now sort of easier and more modular and so they're easier to handle which will make developing mods for the game much more simple and thus the community of the modding community should I say will be sustained for much longer because well more people will be making mods for it so good good job on that squad they've also started this cool little magazine this sort of online magazine on their website called the Kerbal Chronicles I will leave a link to the page that it's on in the description down below it's actually pretty good I've had a quick flick through it and it's actually it's pretty good not gonna lie it's made in part collaboration with the community as well, so if you want to go check it out, like I say, link will be in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. But on to the main meat of today's video, and of course it is this forum post, which was posted about a week or two ago um, by the squad devs on the KSP forums, obviously. The post reads the following. Hello everyone. Over the past months, we've undertaken a huge endeavor to bring Kerbal Space Program towards its next leap forward. KSP is by now a mature game with tons of content and an immense modding community, which has devised all kinds of tools and creative additions to the game, so making something new and exciting for our players was a challenge we faced head on. We wanted to do something that could enrich the Kerbal experience, offer value to players, bring exciting new content and allow more creativity, all while bringing countless more hours of enjoyment. And with the 1.2.2 release, we had a game in an optimal state to tackle an idea we'd been had in discussion for a while. 
we are thrilled and proud to announce Kerbal Space Program Making History Expansion. And you're probably going to hear me saying that a lot throughout the rest of this forum post. This content filled expansion to the base game will include Mission Builder and History Pack. The article continues. Mission Builder is an exciting new feature that puts the process of creating and editing missions in your hands. We wanted to give you the tools to get the sense of being part of a space program's mission design division by tailoring your own missions and narratives in a friendly and intuitive interface. Once created, you will be able to easily share your missions with the wider community. But that is not all. Kerbal Space Program Making History Expansion will include loads of additional content to enjoy. This includes the History Pack, which are pre-made missions for you to play immediately. You will have the opportunity to relive historical missions from humankind's own space history, all with that unique Kerbal Space Program twist. The pack will include a new set of parts and a new astronaut suit for your brave heroes. Imagine walking in the boots of the astronauts who witnessed the majesty of outer space for the first time, or landed on other celestial bodies as the first of their kind. Keeping up with Kerbal Space Program tradition, Kerbal Space Program Making History Expansion will be highly customizable and moddable. It then goes on to summarize the key features, stating a simple interface. Using intuitive drag and drop node interface, you can easily create a new and exciting new missions for yourself and others to enjoy. Creators can also add constraints such as time, fuel, and part limits, as well as unexpected mission events. Recreating history. Included in Kerbal Space Program Making History Expansion is the History Pack. Players will be able to experience the trials and tribulations of the early days of space exploration on missions inspired by real-life historical events. New Parts Aside from mission creation tools, Kerbal Space Program Making History Expansion will have additional parts such as new fuel tanks, adapters, decouplers, fairings, and command pods, inspired by both American and Soviet space programs. My personal favorite feature, the Kerbal Personal Parachute. Your astronauts will now be safer in case of imminent disasters with all new personal parachutes. So next time Jeb is in trouble and all systems are failing, you can simply eject him and activate his parachute. Then you just have to hope there's an atmosphere to slow him down challenge other players. A new addition to Kerbal Space Program Making History Expansion will be the concept of scoring. At the end of a mission, you will get a numerical score to compare with your friends and the community. So overall, this is sounding like a pretty dank update so far, not gonna lie. But then I got hit with this right hook. Kerbal Space Program Making History Expansion is still in development and will be released as a paid expansion. Pricing and availability details will be announced at a later date. Hmm. It seems as though our announcement two weeks ago was met with some disappointment, but we were just holding on to the good stuff. We can't wait to see what the community is going to be able to create with this new creative tool within Kerbal Space Program, now more than ever with an enriched and diverse community of people from all around the world, who can now enjoy KSP in their own language. Keep tuned to KSP Weekly to learn more about ongoing development and upcoming details. Happy launchings, the KSP development team. Now I'm not really sure what to make of this. I'm not against Kerbal Space Program having paid DLC as part of its its post-release roadmap, I guess. But in order to have paid DLC, I do think that that content needs to be kind of more substantial than what we've gotten in previous free updates, such as, well, every one that we've gotten so far. From this announcement, it does kind of seem like this expansion pack is basically just 1.3, the free update, only locked behind a paywall. None of the part, none of the actual features seem like they're anything particularly different or more substantial than what we usually get. It just seems that now it's locked behind a paywall when compared to other updates that we've had. Don't get me wrong, it looks like a fantastic update. It's just, are people going to be put off by the fact that you need to pay? 
to be fair, at the end of the day, Squad are a business, and I know they've got to pay the bills and everything, and people have, KSP has kind of dropped off the map, and people have kind of, the player base has started to diminish ever so slightly over the past few months, since development has kind of slowed post 1.0 release, obviously, which happens with a lot of games, so you can't really knock Squad for that. So I guess it's through paid updates like this that they're going to be able to sustain the game for longer post release, but honestly, I don't think too many people are going to buy it if the price is wrong. Personally, I wish they would just stick to the update sort of tradition where all the free updates are free and then add more substantial content, say for example more star systems or Kerbal customization options. I guess that something like that could always be implemented into the game for sort of a microtransaction sort of thing. That's just that's just thought that might be completely impractical. But I'd rather them stick to sort of free updates and then add cosmetic stuff like that afterwards, similar to how a lot of AAA games are doing that nowadays. However, if this update's priced at like no more than five pounds, I'd say it's probably still worth picking up. I mean, let's be honest. That, that's not really a lot of money, less than five, five pound or less. If it's any more than that though, I definitely say steer clear of it because while this does look like it's a fantastic update, it's not worth five pounds. I'm sorry, it really isn't. At least from what they've shown at the moment, there may be some amazing thing that they're leaving out which may warrant the asking price amazingly, but that's if they're even, they haven't announced any pricing yet. This is pure conjecture on my part. Who knows, all of my fears could be laid to rest in a future post, but that remains to be seen. So until then, I want to know what you guys' opinions are. What do you think about KSP having paid DLC? And what do you think about these certain things such as a Kerbal personal parachute and parts that could be part of the base game? being included as part of it. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below, let's get a discussion, do you think I'm crazy and do you think I'm acting all entitled to this sort of thing, or do you completely agree with me and do you think that paid DLC is the worst thing in the entire world? Leave a comment down below, as always I'd be really interested to hear them. So that's going to pretty much round it off for this episode of KSP News guys, this is actually the second go of me recording this video because I got halfway through recording it in Premiere Pro and Premiere Pro decided that it didn't like me doing that and crashed and lost two hours of editing progress and I got really 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 mad so my voice is absolutely shot now I'm gonna go take a drink of water and then go get working on my Cassini tribute video which will be out at some point in the next week or so as well I've also got a Osiris New Dawn Let's Play with my friend Simon that's going to be releasing over the next couple of weeks potentially and so that's gonna be pretty fun when that releases um, so I hope you guys will enjoy that I'm gonna post the first episode again at some point next week probably all going well. Uh, I'm trying to make as much content, as much backlog that I can release as possible because obviously I have A-level exams coming up and everything so hopefully I can keep you guys sustained with content over that period. But once again guys I want to thank you very much for watching, thanks for sticking with me until I actually started this series back up again. It really feels good to be back and hopefully I can keep this sustained for longer than the last series. So here's to the KSP News Show guys, remember to like and subscribe for more, my name is Jin Lee Kerman and as always, stay classy.